everyone, the Kindergarten Rock channel here. Um, uh, I've been in a rush to get the best Christmas pageant ever book and finished. Um, uh, I was not able to this weekend because uh, I was not feeling well. But uh, I'm feeling a lot much better today. So um, uh, I decided to come around and read. Anyways, today's book is called The Best Christmas Pageant Ever. Let's read. Chapter 6 Our last rehearsal happened to be the night before the potluck supper, and when we got there, the kitchen was full of ladies in aprons counting out dishes and silverware and making a plot applesauce cake for the dessert. I'm sorry about this, one of the ladies told Mother, but with so much to do at this time of year, the committee decided to come in this evening and set up the tables and all. I just hope we won't bother you. Oh, you won't, Mother said. We won't We won't be in the kitchen. You won't even know we're, we're here. Mother was wrong. Everybody in that end of town knew, knew we were there before the evening was over. Now, this is going to be a dress, a dress, a, a dress rehearsal. Mother told us all, and right away three or four baby angels began hollering that they forgot their wigs. Half the angel choir had forgotten their robes, and and Hobby and Hobby Carmichael said he didn't he didn't have any kind of costume. Wear your father's bathrobe, Charlie told them. That's what I do. He doesn't have a bathrobe. What does he hang around the house in the ha What does he hang around the house in? His underwear, Hobby said. I looked at Alice Wind Lincoln to see if she was going to write that down on her pad of paper. But Alice was standing all by herself in a corner pa painting her hair. Painting her hair. Her hair, uh, her hair was all washed in, her hair was all washed and curled, and, and her robe was clean and, was clean and, uh, possessed. She had even, she had even, she had even put baseline on her eyelids, so they would, then, so they would shine in the candlelight, and everyone would say, Who was the lovely girl in the angel choir? Why isn't she Mary? I guess Alice was afraid to move for fear she might uh, spoil herself. Don't worry about your wigs, Mother said. The main point of a dress rehearsal isn't the costumes. The main point is... <clears throat> the main point is to go right straight through without stopping... And that's what and that's what we're going to do. Just as just as if uh, we were doing it for the whole congregation. I'm going to sit in the back of the church and be the audience. But it didn't work that way. The baby angels came in all all came in at the wrong place and had to go back out again. And a whole gang of shepherds didn't come in at all. For fear of Gladys, Imogene couldn't find baby Jesus' doll and wrapped up a, a great big memorial flower er, flower in the best in the in the blanket and then dropped it on. And then and it dropped it on Ralph's foot. And half the angel choir sang, "Always in a major," while the other. Uh, 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 Sang always in a major, while the other half sang "Oh, little town of Bethlehem." So, uh, so we had to start over a lot. I've got the baby here, Imogene barked, and the wise men, and the wise men, don't touch him. I name him Jesus. No, no, no! Mother came flying, flying up the axles. Uh, as it as. Uh, flying up the uh, the uh, the aisle, 
No, Imogene, you know you're not supposed to say anything. Nobody said anything in our pageant, except the angel, the angel of the Lord, and the choir singing choir, and, and the singing, and, and the choir singing carols. Mary and Joseph and the wise men made a lovely picture for us to look at while, at while, while we think about Christmas and what it means. I guess Mother had to say things like that. Even though everybody knew it was a big lie. The Hermits didn't look they didn't look like anywhere anything out of the Bible more like trick or treat. Imogene even had on great big gold earrings and she wouldn't take them off. No, Imogene Mother said, You know Mary didn't wear earrings. I have to wear these, Imogene said. Why is that? I got my ears pierced, and if they don't keep something in them, they'll grow together. Well, they won't grow together in an hour and a half, Mother said. No, but I better leave them in. Imogene pulled her earrings, which made which made you shudder. It was it was it was like looking at pictures in National Geographic's of natives with their ears. Stretched all the way to their shoulders. What did the doctor say about leaving something in the mother said? What doctor? Well, who pierced your ears? Gladys Imogene, Gladys Imogene said. This really made your, you shudder. The thought of Gladys Herdman piercing ears? I thought she probably used an ice pack in, in for a... Uh, the next six months, I kept watching Imogene to see her ears turn black and, and fall off. All right, Mother said, but we'll try to find something sm smaller and more appropriate for you to wear in a pageant. Now, we'll start again and go right straight through, and I think I I ought to tell tell them what, what his name is, Imogene said. No. Besides, you remember it wasn't Mary who 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 named the baby. I told you, Ralph. Racket Imogene on the back. I named him Joseph. Didn't name the baby either. Mother said. God sent an angel to tell Mary what he what his name what his name should be. Imogene sniffed. I would have named him Bill. Alice went when Lincoln sucked her in her breath, and I could hear her scratching down on her pad of paper that Imogene Herdman would have called the baby Bill instead of Jesus. What angel was that? Was that Ralph wanted to know? Was that Gladys? No, Mother said. Gladys is the angel who comes to the shepherds with the news. Yeah, Gladys said. Unto you, a child is born. She yelled in the sh she yelled at the shepherds. Unto me, Imogene yelled back at her. Not them, me. I'm I'm the one that that had that had the baby. No, no, no. Mother sat down on the on the front on a front pew. That just means that Jesus belongs to everybody. Unto all of us, a child is born. Now, she sighed, let's start again. And why didn't they let Mary name her own, her own baby, Imogene demanded. Why did, why did that angel do? Just woke up and say, name him Jesus. Yes, mother said, because she was in a hurry to get finished. But Alice went like and had to open her, had to open her big mouth. I just, I know what, what the angel said. Alice popped up. She ca she said, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I call, I could have hit her. My God, Imogene said, he'd never get, get out of the first grade if he were to write all that. 
There was a big crash at the back of the church, as if somebody dropped all the collection plates. But it wasn't the collection plates. It was Mrs. Hopkins, the minister's wife, dropping a whole tray of silverware. I'm sorry, she... I'm sorry, she said. I was just passing by, and I thought I'd take a pee. Would you like to sit down and watch the rehearsal, Mother's, Mother asked. No, Mrs. Hopkins couldn't see... Couldn't see, couldn't seem to take her eyes off Imogene. I'd better go check on the applesauce cake. You didn't have to say that, I told Alice. All, all, all that about wonderful everlasting father and all. Why not? Alice said, pat, patting her hair. I thought Imogene wanted to know. By the, by the time everybody was hot and tired and most of the baby angels had to go to the bathroom, so Mother said, we would take a five-minute recess and then we'll start over, she said, looking sort of hopeless, and go right straight through without stopping, won't we? Well, we never didn't, we never did go right straight through. The five-minute recess was a big mistake because it stretched to 15 minutes and Imogene spent the whole time smoking cigars in one of the John, and in one of the Johns in the ladies' room. Then Mrs. Herbert McCarthy went to the ladies' room and opened the door and smelled something funny and saw some smoke. And then she ran, and then she ran right to the church's office and called the fire department. We were singing angels we have heard. We have, we have heard on high. We, we, when we heard, what, what we heard was the fire it was the fire engine pulling up on a lot of the church on the lawn of the church with with the sirens blaring and the red lights flashing the firemen hurried in and made us all go outside and they dragged the big holes in the front door and went looking for a for for a fire to put out the street was full of baby angels crying and shepherds climbing all over the fire truck of firemen and all the ladies on the potluck committee and neighbors were the neighbors who came to see what was going on, and Reverend Hopkins, who ran, who ran over, over from the par parsonage in his pajamas, and and he, in his wooly, in his wooly ba bathrobe, nobody knew what 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 had happened, including the Herdmans. But I guess they figured that that whatever it was, they had done it, so they left. Why in the world did you call the fire department? Mother asked Miss, Mrs. McCarthy when she finally heard the whole story. Because the ladies' room was full of thick smoke. It couldn't have been Mother. It couldn't have been Mother. It couldn't have been Mother. Said you just got excited, didn't you know it was it was cigar 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 smoke? Mrs. McCarthy started at her. Stared at her. No, I didn't. I didn't expect to find cigar smoke in the ladies' room of the church. She rest. She rolled. She rolled around and marched back to the kitchen. But but by the time the kitchen was full of smoke, then the ladies' room became wild. Then the was fuller of was. Fuller of smoke than the ladies' room because while everybody was milling around in the street, all the applesauce cake burned up. Of course, the ladies, the ladies on the potluck committee were were mad about that. Mrs. McCarthy were mad about that. Mrs. McCarthy was mad, and Alice said her mother would be good and mad when she heard about it. Most of the baby angel mothers were mad because they couldn't find out what had happened. And somebody said Mrs. Hopkins was mad because Reverend Hopkins was running around the streets in her pajamas. It turned out to be what it turned out to be the one great big sinful thing Alice kept hoping for. Mrs. Windlinken Read Alice's notes, got on the telephone, and that very night, and called up everybody she could think of in the ladies' 
aid in the women's society, and she called most of the flower committees and all the Sunday school teachers and Reverend Hopkins. And Reverend Hopkins came to see came to see mother. I can't make I can't make head of, of tail. I can't make head or tail of it, he said. Some people say that that some people say that some people say they set fire to the ladies' room. Some people say they set fire to the kitchen. One lady told me that Ibogee threw a flower pot at Ralph. Mrs. Winlinken said all they they do is talk about sex and underwear. That was hobby. Car Charma Carmichael. Mother said talking about underwear and they didn't set and they didn't set fire to anything. The only fire was in the kitchen where the potluck committee let their apron their ape, apple let their applesauce cake burn up. Well, Reverend Hopkins looked on unhap- looked on happy. The whole church is is in an uproar. Do you think we should call off the pageant? Certainly not, Mother said. By that time, she was mad, too. Why? It didn't... It's going to be the best Christmas pageant... It's going to be the best Christmas pageant we've ever, we've ever had. Of all the lies she told so far, that was the biggest, but you'd have to admire her. It was like General Custer say. Custer saying, Bring on the Indians! Maybe so, Reverend Hopkins said. I'm just afraid that no one will come to see it. But he was wrong. Everyone, everybody came to see what the Hermans would do. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed chapters, uh, chapter 6 of the best Christmas pageant ever. Um, uh, tomorrow I'm gonna try to, we're gonna try to finish up the book, and then, uh, we gotta review the rat show about, uh, uh, and we gotta review the rat show of watching the movie. Well, thank you for watching, have a good day.